I saw a Greg the Hammer Valentine in the men's room, and we had a discussion about skincare products. Any <laughs> <laughs> sister side of this. Oh, never mind. He moved to Las Vegas. He says he has to use more moisturizer. I'm good with that. He's one of my favorite competitors of all time. I uh, love his. Uh, well, you can see through his stuff, man. He was a machine. Greg the Hammer Valentine is going to be receiving uh, the Men's Wrestling Award. And uh, before we uh, meet Greg, his presenter, please look at the video screen. One of the toughest, most rugged competitors ever to come down the pike, Greg the Hammer Valentine more than carried on the tradition first established by his legendary father, Johnny Valentine. In 1970, Valentine began training in the legendary Stu Hart's Dungeon in Calgary. Then it was on to Detroit, where he completed further training under the original sheet. In the 70s, 80s, and into the 90s, between the NWA and WWE, the Hammer held all of the major titles. Perhaps most impressive is the fact that Valentine is one of the few superstars who can lay claim to competing on the NWA's first Starcade, as well as the first WrestleMania, where he successfully defended the Intercontinental Championship against Junkyard Dog. During his career, which has spanned over four decades, Valentine has held more than 40 championships, including the NWA United States Heavyweight Championship, WWE Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship, and WWE World Tag Team Championship, and his many successful partnerships include Honky Tonk Man, Baron Von Raschke, Ric Flair, and Brutus Beefcake. After leaving WWE, the Hammer made frequent appearances on WCW Monday Nitro as late as 1997, and returned to compete on WWE Monday Night Raw in 2005, 35 years after his debut match. Greg the Hammer Valentine's hard-hitting style in the ring will never be forgotten. He is a born-again Christian and occasionally speaks at high schools and colleges with Ted DiBiase. He is also part of the Christian wrestling organization World Impact Wrestling. On March 13, 2004, Valentine was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame by his former manager Jimmy Hart and is a 2016 inductee into the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. A longtime supporter of the CAC, we are proud to honor Greg the Hammer Valentine with the Men's Wrestling Award. Here's the uh, bowling money. Who's the chariot in the joint? And I don't know why there's cash in here and a joint. And I'm very uncomfortable out here, so there it is. I'd like to introduce Craig Massey, who's going to present Greg the Hammer Valentine, this uh, Men's Wrestling Award. Uh, 13 years ago, I had the opportunity to meet Greg. Before that, my memories of Greg started many years ago. As a young kid growing up uh, in a small town, which for me was home of Louisiana in the late 70s, uh, cable wasn't around. We only had a small handful of local channels. And uh, wrestling on TV was very, very limited. Fortunately for me, my family owned the local grocery store, which had a magazine rack. Well, back in those days, a magazine rack was a big deal, because that, that was our source of, of news and entertainment through what was going on in, in the U.S. and actually in the world. Well, I was fortunate enough to have wrestling magazines at that time, so of course, at that time, in that age, the only two magazines that I was really worried about was one, the Playboy issue coming out. <laughs> the next one was the wrestling magazine that was coming out. Every wrestling magazine at that time, especially with the new issues coming out, Greg was in every magazine. And many a times on the front cover. 
he caught my attention at a young age. Every article, everything in the magazines, he was always in these major feuds with wrestlers. Looking at the magazines and reading them, I mean, him and his opponent always had blood on them. You could just read and see the pictures and reading before cable and anything was out. Just reading the magazine that when you looked at Greg in the magazine, it was real. Greg was one of the first wrestlers for me that made that made me believe that it was real. As cable and, and, and everything came out, of course, it only confirmed it only confirmed how real he made it for me. Thirteen years ago, when I had the opportunity to meet him, I jumped on the, I jumped on the opportunity. And since then, over the over those years, we have spent a lot of time together, visiting me, visiting him in Florida, him visiting me in Louisiana, bringing him fishing, eating crawfish, swamp tours. But the most most importantly was the the stories. He is a memory bank of stories, and to discuss and hear these stories back in those days, as a young wrestling fan, was was extraordinary. I mean, it's, everybody should be able to hear these stories. And with his father like he was, he had big, big, big boots to step in. But of course he did, and I'm sure his father is very proud of him now. He is a 2004 WWE Hall of Fame. He's a 2016 Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame, which is in Wichita. Texas, which is, uh, I recommend everybody to see, as well as the CAC, Brian Blair, there's a lot of, they're, they're doing a lot of good with the, C, with the CAC and the, in, in, in the rest of us. But again, I'm done with, Greg, you're a man, come up here, get the men's award. Feet. 
That's how I got started. <laughs> um, my career is 47 years long. I just counted it out. Yeah. <laughs> I broke in 1970. I'm really lucky to be able to still walk. The only reason I can still walk is because I fought back. And I never let anybody abuse me in the ring except Andre the Giant. <laughs> he used to sit on me. The one match that I had with Andre the Giant, and it wasn't in a battle royal, he sat on me in the corner, and he farted on me. <laughs> and the referee said, I said, ref, I get him. Top me down, even though your shoulders aren't down. I said, well, get him off of me. <laughs> God bless Andre the Giant. I saw the uh, HBO film documentary. Another documentary I saw was 3030 on Ric Flair, and he mentioned me as being, I'm going to Greg Valentine's house because that's where my girlfriend's at. <laughs> <laughs> I did like to party, but he partied more. <laughs> he said he was with 10,000 whatever, and, my number's not that high, but I enjoyed being with Ric Flair. Oh my God, oh my God. Uh, and the rest is history. I went to New York. Vincent Mann Sr. said, you need a hold? I said, a hold? Because I was just dropping the elbow back down. He says, you need a hold? We're going to give you the figure four away lock. And that's been, that's been my signature hole that brought me a lot of success. All I had to do was go out in the ring and go for a guy's leg and the people would pop. And I go, wow, I know how to work now. <laughs> it's all about pushing promos. It's about pushing your ass on TV so everybody out there knows who the hell you are. It don't matter if you could go an hour every night, which I did. When I left Mid-Atlantic, all I did was hour Broadways, me and Flair and the Anderson Brothers, and the list goes on. So I think, wow, George Scott says, we're going to send you to New York. This is 1979. He says, you're going to love it up there. They need, they need a good heel. They need someone to can wrestle because they weren't seeing too much wrestling up there. And so I'm thinking, well, I'm just going to be a cakewalk. I can go in there and go five minutes, ten minutes, Madison Square Garden. They come up, so we heard that you are the hour specialist. <laughs> and you can have, you can go against Bob Backlund for one hour tonight in your debut at Madison Square Garden. But you know what? It turned out great. We didn't even throw one punch for 60 minutes. And... Bob Backer, you're great. Came back. A lot of people say, well, you had 41 championships, but where's the world championship? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Madison Square Garden, double pin with Bob Backer. I walked out with a belt, got pictures taken with it, and then they came and took the belt away from me. And they held it up for 30 days, but I think that counts as being a world champion. Andrew Anderson, my good buddy Andrew Anderson, helped get me going in these later years and helping me put my tights on and my shoes on so I could still get out to the ring. And I'm still going. I had a match for Frankie Del Falco about two months ago in Milwaukee. It was freezing cold. So I'm still wrestling. But by the way, welcome to Las Vegas. I'm living in Las Vegas now. Oh, wow. I lived in Florida for 33 years, and last year we had three hurricanes. I said it's time to leave. 
So I'm originally from Seattle, and I went to high school in Los Angeles, so this is familiar territory to me. I love it out here. I, I love the people are nice to me. I go to restaurants. They actually know who I am. They know about wrestling. They love wrestling out here. And we're actually considered celebrities, so that's all good for everybody that's in this wrestling business. This is one tough friggin' business to be in, and I'm just glad that uh, I received this award tonight. And now that I'm here in Vegas, I'll put this up there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jim Ross. Thank you, Pat Patterson Worthy. Wait a minute. Hey, hey, hey. And the boys, they're all here. All right. Thank you, guys. Oh, my God. Hey, thank you. Greg, I can't believe that.